Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology, and first daily Mormon history podcast. I'm Rick Bennett. What is it like for a Protestant to visit a Strangite and a Bickertonite church for the first time? We'll find out with David Boyce. He's the host of 52 Churches in 52 Weeks. And we'll also talk about his controversial visit to a community of Christ Church in Independence. You won't want to miss this conversation. Check it out. Next thing I know, Steve Pinecker reaches out to me from Mormon <laughs> Book Reviews. Steve's good at networking. Yes. Yeah. So he had watched a few of my videos, and he saw my video at a Seventh-day Adventist church because I, I was telling about my history of trying to do a Seventh-day Adventist church the first 52 and 52, and I showed up on a Sunday. Uh-oh. But Seventh-day Adventists are on Saturday. Right. I didn't know that. <laughs> so I showed up to this Seventh-day Adventist church on a Sunday because I didn't do enough research. Right. And Steve- Just purposely. Right. Purposely. So Steve found that hilarious. And he's like, <laughs> I need to get this guy to do an interview. And- my friendship with Steve um, grew, and he started talking to me about there were other Book of Mormon believing churches. Right, and I'm like, "There's more." So um, now, had Steve started his channel yet? Yes. Oh, he had. Yes. Okay. So I think he, I think he was maybe about a year in with his channel. I didn't think he'd gone back that far, but yeah. wow, he's. I thought he said three years. I guess that was his 2020. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so he he kind of let me know about Community of Christ. He told me about this, um, this, I can't remember the, the exact term, this king Be of Beaver Island, you know? Oh, Strangites. And, yeah, because he knew I was in Wisconsin. And it's yeah. like, I, you know, that, Strang that Strangites are in Wisconsin. I had no clue right. who James Strang was. Oh, I thought he was going to tell you about the Bickertonites. But yeah, Strang well, he, makes he more sense. He told me about the Bickernet Bickertonites too, because that was one that he let me know as well. And yeah, he attends that church quite often. It seems In like fact, it. I, he even took me in Florida, so it was my, yeah. my first time. That's so. his jam. Yeah. The Pentecostal um, excitement for the worship uh -huh. with the uh, Songs of Zion and everything. You know? <laughs> so, but yeah, so like I couldn't keep doing, like I was trying to do different denominations, different churches. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to try some different ones. So uh, we did Community of Christ uh, with the Stone Church in Indi Independence, Missouri. Mm -hmm. So that was my first time. Because as a Protestant, hearing about the temple lot for the first time, this blew my mind. It's like, wait a minute, there's all these different Book of Mormon believing churches kind of like staked around. So this grass. let me tell you something. I was because so I, curious about that. I just watched that and it said yeah. temple lot. And so I was thinking it was the Hedrickites and the white church, um, but it was the stone church, which is community Across of Christ. The street. Exactly. Yeah. And so, because I was like, oh, this is kind of mislabeled. Huh? <laughs> See, and, and like, I, I figured, okay, I'm going to visit the temple a lot, but like with the Hedrickites, because I had one request to do the Hedrickite church. Yeah. But I'm like, well, the temple with the, the community of Christ temple, it's like, obviously, like I, sh I should do the stone church first. Okay. So, so that's what I picked for that Sunday. Well, and that turned out to be controversial too, right? A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> So, so tell us more about that. So I had, so I was very excited to go into community of Christ. And so with the stone church, I, I had heard about Joseph Smith, the third. Mm -hmm. And to me, like, I really want to do a church service in the temple, but that's not quite no. how it worked. Right. So I'm like, well, I want to talk about the temple a lot. I want to talk about that temple, but I need to do a church service. So I walked into the stone church that day and I, I don't remember I don't think I could find the service time on the website. I could be wrong on that, but I remember seeing the sign. Oh, I think the website said, said it was closed, but there was it wasn't closed. So I think with the website, it had mentioned like with all COVID stuff that right. went on. It was a little out of date at that time. And I think I saw with the, the worship service, I think in the video, you'll see like 1010. So I walked in 1010. And so they sang the hymn and then all of a sudden it was a church meeting. And I just, so, all right, I'm going to sit down. And then it, it got a little bit controversial just because there was, you could hear the community of Christ struggles at that time. And they played a, a video with the president. Um, BZ. BZ, yep. And so I walked out of that church and it's like, how do I do this video? Because I don't want to be critical, but this is something that is happening in many churches where you're seeing the struggles 
especially in older churches, from the overhead especially. So I tried to be as sensitive as I could with the video. And at the same point, like, how do I handle this? Because I don't want to be, you know, reporting anything negatively. But my channel wasn't big enough where it's like, okay, maybe a few hundred people may see it tops. And then more and more people started to, to hear about it just because there, there were struggles within the community of Christ that day that I heard. Financially. Financially from the overhead and how do we keep the churches afloat given the, kept the current economic conditions at this time. So Especially right after COVID where they're really struggling for money, the whole yeah. economy. Yeah. Yeah. And especially as church congregations get older and older too, mm -hmm. that's another struggle. And it's happening with so many different churches. So, but I, I remember um, I played um, the recording of like the hymn that they ended the service with. And I'm just like, this is one of the most beautiful things. And that just, to me, I gained such an appreciation into the Latter-day Saint movement from that visit because, you know, I went to the LDS Visitor Center as well. I'm learning about pioneer history. Um, one of the senior missionaries is showing me all around. I'm seeing the struggles with the community of Christ. I'm seeing everything that happened, all these landmarks, all surrounding the area, the temple lot, which is a Protestant. You know, this is very different to me. There was just so much there. And like I gained such an appreciation from that visit. I just wasn't expecting the video to do 30,000 views or wherever it's at now. You yeah. Know? So. Yeah. Well, very cool. So did you go back and visit the uh, mm -hmm. Church of Christ Temple Lot? The Hedrick High I Church? Haven't. Oh, you no, have it? I haven't. Oh, wow. So, so maybe we'll have to go together. We we should. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a call. Okay. We'll, we'll do it. Oh, I love going to independence. So uh we'll 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 make that happen. Yeah. So and I guess I will let people know tomorrow we're gonna go to where? You tell us. Oh, we're going to try to do St. George Open House Temple. Yes. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that, too, because I haven't seen it since the remodel. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm very curious to see what this looks like. Are you going to put a video out for that one, too? Uh, I'm hoping so. Okay. Um, with uh, I did a video, video recently on the Bentonville, Arkansas Temple. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot of interest on YouTube with that video. That one blew up, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That one blew up as well. Um, 100,000 views. Wow. I, I don't like to, like, hey, look all these views. I don't care about that. It's like, here is just a different church. Here's a different experience. Yeah. Here's my experience. Here's my recap of what I took away as a first time visitor. <laughs> Cause I remember I watched that video too. And you said, we just walked through the temple, but there wasn't anybody to ask questions about what this room did or what was this room for. And so I'm like, Oh, yeah. well, I can answer those yeah. questions and for they, you. They had people. They had people there, but I think as an introvert, I'm just. It's hard for me to just walk up to strangers yeah. and just be like, "Hey, I don't know anything." Well, and plus, what it's very it? reverent too, because they're not like yeah temples. We try to keep keep our voices down, right? So, so I want to be respectful at the same yeah. time, but well, you can ask me anything. Okay, good. I'll, I'll try to you, answer. I'm just gonna question your ear off tomorrow. yeah it'll be fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> i might have to do a road trip video we'll see yeah there you go um well cool all right so we haven't talked about the strang eye church in wisconsin yeah. tell us about that so strang eye church was week 39 okay and um because <clears throat> my lds church visits were more popular than my other ones same with the community of christ <clears throat> suddenly i started to call ahead of time when it came to Latter-day Saint churches. Mm -hmm. So that way, if the video got more views than usual, like, hey, I'm going to give you guys a head up, heads up. Like, I'd like to visit your church, but is it okay if I do a video on it? Mm -hmm. So uh, I reached out to Steve. Steve reached out to Kyle Bashirs, Baptist preacher, obviously, on other Gospel Tangents episodes. Because right. I've had to see Kyle's interviews as well. And I just have, I, I have a third one in, in, in the works. But. Ooh. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> well, did you see his, oh, you weren't there. It was at the Book of Mormon conference where he talked about translating James Strang's Vori Plates. Oh. Very, very interesting. Okay. I think I may have seen some pictures on Facebook. Yeah. That sounds interesting. It was a great presentation. But anyway. Okay. So you talked to Kyle. So we talked to Kyle. The Baptist preacher. Baptist preacher. Specializes in Strangite history. 
And then he got me in contact with Bill Shepard. Uh -huh. And Bill is the Stringite historian right. with the church. And Bill's amazing. Bill's I love Bill. Bill's fantastic. Yes. <laughs> Anybody who meets Bill loves Bill. Yes. So with this visit, I'm like, I need to listen to Gospel Tangents. I need to hear Rick <laughs> interview Bill Shepard. Oh, wow. Just so I can kind of get a little bit of an, an idea because... With a Strangai church, it's a remnant church. I want to be very respectful as I'm visiting this. So you found out they're like Seventh-day Adventists. Yes, because Steve and Kyle both made sure to let me know service is on Saturday, right? not like not a Sunday like any other one. Right. So they were looking out for me to make <laughs> sure I showed up on the right day. Yeah. So the Strangai church, though, fantastic people. And Bill, it's on Mormon Road too, isn't it? Mor well, Mormon Road is on the side. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like you have Mormon Road. It's this, I don't know how many miles, maybe three, four miles or so. And then there is like a stop sign. And then it's like another road. I can't remember the name of it off the top That's of my right. head. But then the String Eye Church is right down the road okay. from there. So. So tell us more about that because yeah. I have not attended a string eye service and, yeah. and would love to know more about it. Yeah. Well, they were fantastic. So uh, I met uh, two of the elders and then Bill. So it was very strange for me because I'm listening to your interview with Bill. I park, I walk out of my car and Bill is just walking right in. So <laughs> it was very, worked out perfectly for the timing on that. Uh, Did he know you were coming? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I had let him know ahead of time. And, and Bill was just fantastic. I know. And I love Bill. We sat down in their, kind of like their kitchen area. Okay. And the very first thing walking in, you notice, is you have a picture of Joseph Smith and then the picture of James Strang. Right. The two prophets. Mm -hmm. And on the side then is, um, oh, what's the letter called? I can't think of it off the top of my head. The James Strang letter of... Appointment. Appointment, yes. There Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Like, You're talking to a Mormon history. Writer. I know. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Rick, help me out. <laughs> so, so, uh, you know, so there's this giant replica of that. And then we sat down and Bill gets talking and it's just like, I just, I really just appreciate the passion and the, the fact that they let me in uh -huh. and Bill just was finding more and more information to kind of give to me. I know that's the way that's Bill what, is. That's just so, it was just so kind. Yeah. And, uh, he, he gave me. Uh, the JWHA um, journal or... He's a former president. Yep, 2008 to 2009. Yep. And, you know, I, I read the beginning of him talking with, I want to say Stanley Kimball. Oh. Not the president, Stanley Kimball, if I'm saying this right. Spencer Kimball was the Kimball. president. Yeah. So then with, I guess, ancestors, ancestors was Heber C. Kimball. And I'm not the historian here, but... <laughs> but um, just the way that Bill kind of talked about his experience at the first JWHA, how he was welcomed despite being a very different remnant background from everyone else to just have radically different beliefs, but just have that acceptance mm -hmm. and for them to return the favor to me, uh, just spoke volumes of the Stringites. Yeah. So. Well, and it also speaks to John Whitmer uh, conference because I remember in, it was in Palmyra right before COVID, I think it was 2019, and there were Baker Tonight, Strangites, uh, like just all different restoration groups. We all got along great. It, it's just a really friendly atmosphere. It's in St. George next year, so if you can come in September. Yeah. Uh, I know that's far away from you Midwest Saints, but it's close for me. Yeah. <laughs> Only now, four hours. Has GWHA been in Utah before? I, this might be the first time. Okay, because I, I thought I saw something about that. Yeah, I think it, it was, might be the first time. Okay. So, yeah. So you got to come out again. I'm going to have to. Well, <laughs> I was, uh, apparently it's going to be the 52nd JWHA. So that fits right. in with my 52 churches. Oh, so there the you number go. number kind of, if I'm going <laughs> to do a second JWHA, it's going to have to be that one. All right. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to it. Yeah. So, all right. Anything else on the Strangites? Uh other than that, yeah, they services? just invited me out for brunch after service. Yeah, they eat after, I've heard. And uh, yeah, it's like I, I've never been invited like that before. Yeah. So I just really appreciated the time there. And I still need to return Bill all the information he gave me. So Bill, I'm going to I'm gonna get it back to you. So <laughs> I knew I had to hold on to one of the books just in case for JWHA, and I'm glad I did. <laughs> it helped with our, with our presentation. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. We'll have to talk about that too, yeah. so.
All right. Um, any other restoration churches that you want to talk about? I did also do the Church of Jesus Christ. The Bigger Tonight. Bigger Tonight. Okay. Yep. So um, went out. Are to they s- in Wisconsin? No. No. So for that, the closest one to me was South Bend, Indiana. Oh. So it made a drive out Was there. that Josh Gailey? No, he lives in Pennsylvania. He lives in Pennsylvania, but I have met Josh. Oh, okay. At a, a Book of Mormon rally this past summer in Independence. Oh, okay. Josh is super cool. Josh is so fun. Josh, it's yes. been way too long. You need to come on Gospel Tangents. <laughs> so. I would love to see that. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. So Josh, just so you know, is an evangelist in the Bickertonite Church. His father, I believe, is the president. That's I what think. I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and he wrote, <laughs> I, yeah. I told Josh this, he sent me this book uh, about the Book of Mormon, and he quoted Hugh Hefner. And I was like, what? I don't think anybody's ever quoted Hugh Hefner in the Book of Mormon in the same book. This is unbelievable. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> But Josh is great. Yeah. yeah. Got to meet him. And he's just such a gifted speaker. Yeah. He speaks with so much conviction and so much passion. Yeah. Uh, he's such a blessing to listen to. I've talked to him a few times, but I don't think we've met in person yet. But yeah, yeah. he's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> so anything else about the bicker tonight? Did they speak in tongues? Uh, no speaking in tongues uh, for the one that I went to. didn't for me either. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we, we sang a, a number of hymns. What I really appreciate is the Songs of Zion. Uh-huh. Um, and just... It's it's a much more Pentecostal type of worship, mm-hmm. but what I like about that is like uh, just the Arling Buffington, right? With the songwriter, there's just so much. Like it, it feels divinely inspired mm-hmm. when you listen to the hymns and the fact that it's not technically organized. Like you can call out and request a song during the worship service. And hopefully, the piano player can play it right. Yeah, yeah. Well, the piano player, I, I, from my understanding, like they can pretty much play anything. That's what I know. Yeah, because and and they're. I know with the LDS Church, one of the things they've tried to do is simplify, simplify, simplify to make it easy for anybody, even you know, not experienced piano players. Yeah, which is nice. But if you go to a bicker tonight service and they're playing just jazzy yeah. gospel music, it's it's cool. It's really fun. Yeah. And so I think that's pretty cool too. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed their church service. And again, they, they welcomed me in with open arms and um they gave me my the, the bicker tonight version of the the Book of Mormon. So with the that Book of Mormon, like they have the red writing inside yeah red letter yeah yeah, yeah anytime that jesus speaks right so like that was our really- church has something against red letter book of Mormons and bibles i'm very curious because i feel like especially with a lot of the bibles already having that like i'm just waiting for healthy us well i will say this uh i spoke with oh what's his name uh there was a guy why can i not remember his name from north carolina yeah i'm sorry i can't remember your name um, he's created a very, I'll have to show it to you, yeah. uh, a gold, it's a gold leaf book of Mormon and he's put red lettering in it. Um, why am I not remembering his name? And, um, he, cause he originally, when he created his, uh, showed it to some general authorities and they were the ones that said, we will never do that because we don't want to look like Protestants. And so. Gosh, why can I not remember his name? Yeah, and it may never change. Yeah, like, but he's even got blue for like angels that speak, and he's he's put things into verse with like poetry, and and he's done it not only with the Book of Mormon, the Book of Isaiah, Book of Jasher, uh, New Testament, Joseph Smith translation. Uh, what's the latest one? Is it the Torah that he's working on now? So it's really, and it's well done. They're expensive books, um, but he's put an amazing amount of research. I got to look up his name. This is driving me crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, we should get you one of those. That'd be, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so, but the Bicker Tonight's do the Red Letter Book of Mormon just naturally. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't remember that. Yeah. And, and the one that I went to, like they would do after service church pictures. So oh, every, really? Everyone that was part of the church service, they take kind of like a fa- church family picture. Uh-huh. And I, I, after that, I'm like, why don't more churches do that? Because it just brings everyone together. And yeah, I don't know. It's just, 
I just really enjoyed that. So they they had me sitting up near the pulpit for their picture that day. Oh, you were in the picture too? Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. So yeah, I really I really appreciate everyone there. That's very cool. Um, I'm looking it up here. Yeah. David Hawking. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'll have to watch that episode. Yeah, 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 it's a lot of fun. So all right. So go out and buy David Hawking's scriptures. They're awesome. <laughs> Are there any other restoration churches? Because I want to hit some others too, but any other restoration churches that you've been to that mm. before well, let's the, the only other on. one I would say that had significance was I got to be, meet Patrick McKay. Okay. With a Book of Mormon rally. Right. And that brought together a number of restoration branches. Right. And that was really interesting just to see. And and same thing with the JWHA was kind of bringing everyone together mm-hmm. from different Book of Mormon believing churches and then sing different hymnal books from different restoration branches. And I just found that really, really beautiful. Yeah. I just saw Patrick a couple weeks ago. So yeah, he's super cool. In fact, uh, I might be having to go out to, is it Iowa or Independence where they have their Book of Mormon rally? Oh, you went. Didn't you go to that? To which one? The Book of Mormon rally? In Independence. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, well, it, was, it was fun the next morning because uh, we got to do uh, a Patrick McKay's home. Oh, so me, Steve, and then members from Scriptures Scriptures Central, uh-huh. uh, like Casey Paul Griffiths, yeah, Scott Woodward, BYU professors, and then members from the Church of Jesus Christ. So we sang Bicker tonight hymns, and right. then also Temple Lot members were there, and it was just like wow, this is. And what I really appreciate about that visit was just the stories and the testimonies, and just how everyone's personal relationship with Jesus Christ, how that helped their lives and how that helped their identity in Christ and how that, how they were using that to help out others. And it just was just a beautiful experience. And like Steve kind of was like, don't you need to go? It's like, yeah, I need to go, but I want to keep hearing all these stories <laughs> yeah. from so many different members of different restoration branches. Well, we'll have to plan on going. Yes. What, what month is it? Oh boy, I want to say June. Oh, I could be no. wrong. That's a bad month for me, but okay, that might be. We'll we'll make it happen anyway. Yeah. But because um, you also re- uh, your recent video was on the John Whitmer Historical Association, and I know you talked about the hymn session uh, there. Yeah. You, can you share your experiences as a first time yeah. attendee and a speaker? At John Whitmer <laughs> Historical Association. Uh, yeah, so I was very, it was very nerve wracking for me. <laughs> but I think a big part of that was just because, like, I am so new mm-hmm. to Mormonism, and just with my background of all these different church visits, I make an interesting point of reference at this point. But at the same point, you know, with so many different, like you, with your presentation, and then with Tyler Anderson, he's doing a presentation on the history of. Latter Day Saints in space, mm-hmm. and then talking with other attendees and other presenters, and just the level of research and what they bring to the table for everything out there, especially with pioneer history, um, it was just so interesting to me to just see the passion, to see the interest, and that was one thing that I found interesting was just the importance of history in. Latter Day Saint history, and to bring that back and forward into the faith as in, with the church right now. So there's just this connection from history, much more so than other type of churches that I see in the United States. Well, you got in the history community, so they they probably over hit you over the head with way too much history, <laughs> which I'm fine with. Yeah, because yeah. I'm just so curious about it at this yeah. point. Well, cool. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with David Boyce. He's the author and host of 52 Churches in 52 Weeks. In our next conversation, we'll find out what some churches are doing to attract visitors. To try and incorporate these movies and bring that type of, maybe person who's not, t- not going to go to church, maybe they had a faith crisis themselves in the past and kind of swore off church altogether. This is just kind of their hook to bring people in, where it's like, oh, This church is doing a Mario sermon series. This one's doing a Star Wars one. This one is doing, I saw one of Barbie this year. A Barbie church. Well, they had a sermon series on Barbie. Okay. So with Life Church, I don't think they did that, but I had seen another church I was planning to attend and I'm like, ah, better not. (laughs) 
If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, subscribe on either Patreon or at GospelTangents.com. For just $5 a month, you can hear the entire audio uninterrupted. On our $10 tier, if you'd like to see the whole video, you can see that uh, either on YouTube.com slash GospelTangents, or I've got a special Facebook group devoted for uh, full videos. So subscribe at GospelTangents.com and uh, sign up for just $10 a month. For $20 a month, if you'd like to get some bonus content, uh, maybe some of the stuff that ended up on the cutting room floor, you can sign up for that. And then if you'd like to talk to me for $100 a month, we'll, we'll do a monthly phone call on something like Zoom, and you can ask me anything you want. So thanks again. Also, don't forget about the merch, mugs, t-shirts, um, hats, things like that. I'm trying to get the ties up there. Hopefully I can get up up there. And uh, thanks again for watching Gospel Tangents. And click here for some more videos.